Hey, listen, are you a home barista looking to get started on a pour over coffee? Well, learn how with us today here on Bean Basics. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle. Welcome to Sunny Saugatuck and welcome to our home and kitchen. Hey, listen, today I'm talking about how I sample coffees. And I'm not talking about the cupping version. Someday we'll talk about that. I'm talking about a quick sample. You know, people send me coffee all the time and they're like, hey, Bob, what do you think about these coffees? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Well, you know what? I'm a busy guy, as you all know. Uh, but I do love cupping coffee. But one of the simplest methods I like to use is simply using the Barrio V60 coffee decanter. And it's really three pieces. Yep. Uh, and this is great. I mean, uh, this is such a, a beautiful decanter. Maybe not quite as beautiful as the Chemex. Um, and it has this great band so you don't burn your hands when you're pouring out the coffee. And it's much simpler to use than the Chemex uh, wood and, and thong system. And the, the filter holder uh, is just nice and snug. Now this does have some advantages too. It does have these, this ribbing here uh, which keeps the filter paper away from the edge. And then it has a very open uh, uh, system on the bottom where uh, the filters uh, literally poke right through. Okay, so you know I like the Hario V60 decanter uh, because well it's easy to manage, uh, it sits in the scale really easily and I can control all the variables right and so I can get through a lot of samplings in a given day. Different than cupping I'm just giving people feedback about the coffee they sent me. So I'm going to show you how I do a V60 pour over and I always start the same way and try to keep all the variables the same. Of course, uh, we start with our filter paper. Uh, filter paper is something you always fold on the crimped line and you can see there's a little crimping right here. We fold that and then I have a tendency to not do a second fold but a, just a little pinch there, a little pinch there and all I'm looking to do is create some rigidity uh, in, in the bowl. Uh, whenever we're uh, doing um, a pour over, uh, we want to wet the filter. Uh, we want to wet the filter uh, so that we can get the paper taste out. We want to wet the filter so the paper gets fully saturated. And then we also want to ensure that we heat this up and we heat this up a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that really quick. And you can see, take it all the way up to the top. Fully saturated. Okay. We're going to let that flow right through. Perfect. Now I'm going to put that to the side for a moment because it's time to weigh out our coffee. And uh, we need to get something on the scale. You need to have a, a good scale with a timer. And we want about 30 grams of coffee. I'm going to do 500 uh, grams of water. So it's a 30 grams of coffee to 500 grams of water. I always start with the same uh, amount of grams for every coffee that I receive. Now, you know, if after I made it, I thought, whoa, that was a little weak or that was a little strong, I might have some adjustment to do either with the amount of coffee, perhaps I take that up 30, to... 32. So I've gone overboard. You've gone overboard. All right. 30.1? Perfect. Okay. Good. Uh, but you know what? Uh, after I've done it and it's poured through, if I thought it was a little weak, maybe I'd add a little more, a uh, few more grams of coffee. Or maybe I'd tighten the grind. It sort of depends. But this is always my starting point. Okay, a little pro tip. Uh, when I grind this coffee, one thing I'm going to do, and I'm using the Baratza um, Encore grinder. I'm actually starting the grinder first and then dumping the coffee in. I'm not going to grind all that because I've pre-ground some for us to sort of shorten time here and, and avoid all the noise of grinding. But uh, if you start your motor before you drop the coffee, uh, the consistency of the grind will be just a little bit better altogether. All right, we need to get our coffee in, and I've got to tear out again. 
Am I at zero? You're at zero. All right, I'm looking to get to 30 grams. Now, normally I'd put 30 in and 30 would come out and I could just dump it in right away. What am I at? 24.8. Oh, it's getting kind of close. It's getting close. 29. Oh! What? 34. Okay. 32. 30.4. 30.4. All right, that's going to be close enough, I 30. think. 30.1. All right, good. Now, right after I put it in, I should give it a little shake to level it out, just like that. And then the other thing I like to do is take a spoon and make a little well right there, okay? Now again, I'm doing this stuff very consistently. Okay, I'm gonna tear out our 30 grams, and right away I'm gonna start our timer, and we're gonna go to the bloom, and this should take about 30 seconds. We're looking to get about twice as much water as coffee, so we should be looking at 60 grams. Where am I at? You're at 48. 48. 53. Okay. 68. 68 is a little much. That's okay. Come in. Seconds. Come in, come in, because we can see it blooming. Blooming is when uh, CO2 is coming out, nitrogen is coming out that was trapped in while roasting, and we want that CO2 to come out, and we just want these uh, grounds to... Uh, absorb as much water as we can without really filtering through yet at this point. What's our time? 40. Perfect. So 30 to 45 seconds is what we do the bloom on. If you don't mind coming back in, we're going to start pouring again and we're going to go in circles to the outside, back inside, to the outside. Now I'm pouring maybe a little bit more aggressively than I will in our little third session, okay? What's our grammage here? 20 to 29, 240, 250. 250? Yeah. Okay, I'm looking to get to 300. Tell me when I'm there. Two seventy-five. All right. Two, ah, whoop. Okay. 290, sorry, I got excited. That's okay, 290's good, 310 would be fine, 300 would be fine. You get the general idea. Now I'm gonna give this a little swirl, if you don't mind coming in a little bit, because I've got grounds that are stuck up on the side and I wanna get those down and off. Now some people will literally scrape the side like this. I find if you just swirl, it's, that's a fine motion. Our objective is to get the bed as flat as possible for extraction. All right, some say you shouldn't pour on the outside paper. Some say it doesn't make a difference, but when I see grounds on the outside paper, I must get rid of them. So I try to flush those down a little bit. And now we're gonna pour very slowly, not agitate as much. Now this is a percolation method. What's my grams? 340, 340. Great. 350. And, you know, I'm pouring at a rate that's just before it dribbling like that. Very slow. Inside circle, outside circle. Back inside. Back outside. 400. Getting pretty close. What's our time? 2.43. Oh, this is looking good. You know, two, three, three and a half minutes. That's what we're looking for in a pour over. What's our grams? 450. All right. What am I at? 470. Tell me when I'm at five. 495. Okay, good. Now, this is a pretty light roast. Uh, this is a first crack coffee, and so I feel pretty comfortable doing a temperature of about 206. The variable that I would change if this was a dark roast coffee as I take that temperature down to 197. Okay, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a swirl and a shake again and let this coffee flow through at this point in time. So light roast means one crack? One crack, right. So when it's in a roaster, it's, it's sort of the darkness of the coffee, right? So uh, Big B tends to have a lot in the medium dark to dark medium range, uh, but a lot of pour overs tend to be much lighter roasts and they would be considered first crack coffees versus second crack coffees. So now the bed is um, a little more clogged, so we're getting a little bit of choke. 
but but that's good the water is sifting through a hundred percent of the grounds all right now i do love these filters and this method because it's it's a it's a free flow rate and the way you control the rate of the water going through is with the grind okay with the grind unlike let's say a, a melita a melita has looks very similar uh, to a v60 except it doesn't have that big hole in the bottom it has a very small hole and so the water is actually getting restricted by the coffee funnel right i want just the coffee to be the restrictor right and then you know we love our chemex and we use this every morning this is another pour over method but uh, I find the paper is very fussy. The smooth wall represents a problem when you put uh, paper filters in here. Of course, we use uh, a metal filter, but it's a lot harder for me to control the variables that I'd like to control on a pour over. Okay. I'm going to hit stop. And we're going to go ahead and give this coffee a try. Where is Spirit Animal from? Well, this, this particular one is from Honduras, right? So this is, this is a super uh, uh, special coffee. It grows at 1,800 meters. It's a medium roast. Uh, it's a washed. And it, it was just harvested this February. And this would be considered a micro lot, all right? By the way, just before you pour, you probably saw me do it. You should give this a little shake because the coffee does stratify a little bit where you'll have fines in the bottom, you have oils in the top, and, and something else in between. Just give it a little bit of a shake like that. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to cup hot coffee, and the closer it gets to room temperature, the better, but let me go ahead and give this a taste. Oh, that's full-blown fruit right there. Um, very, very light. I got a little bit of tart cherry on that. You're not going to believe this, but I got a little bit of banana on that. And a little bit of a finish, just a little bit, that says Sour Patch Kids. Okay. That's how I cop coffee on a regular basis. And why do we have to cut so much coffee these days? <laughs> well, people are sending us samples all the time. Of course, we're doing our Farm Direct program. And when we, when we cup our Farm Direct coffee, this would be the quick method that we would do if we were sort of interested in it. We'd, we'd do a more serious cupping uh, using uh, just water and ground coffee and slurping and all that kind of thing. You might have seen uh, cupping before. We're really excited about our Farm Direct pro program. This is where we're... Uh, uh, buying coffees directly from farmers, getting rid of the brokers, uh, making sure that those farmers are treating people right, treating the planet right, and have some strong social mission. And that's what One Big On in Space is all about. But I want to leave you with another note right now, and that is when you love the world, the world will love you right back. Hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two G's.